Oh, rough landing. Hey guys, welcome to my basement. More specifically, welcome to my old tool room. I say old tool room because as you can see, these massive drawers are now empty. Because I renovated my garage last year, it's now heated and cooled and overall a very lovely place to be. All the tools have left here and are now out there. So if you want to rob me, you know where to look. Anyways, with the price of lumber being insane, $10 for a two x four, mm -mm, not gonna happen. Not the day. I figured I'd go ahead and disassemble this bad boy since it's not needed anymore and get as much material out of this as I can for this and the next couple projects. So let's go ahead, get started and take this sucker apart. spins, it makes a lot of friction. It can get hot. You did it, Theo? Yep. Okay, try again, Jess. This project begins with me buying this translucent plastic 55 gallon barrel off Kijiji for $20 that was previously holding vinegar. Once the vinegar smell is rinsed out, I can measure and mark the center line all the way around the barrel. This is a pretty tricky object to cut, but by wedging the barrel under the lip of my CNC table, it held in place so I could use my circular saw to freehand cut the top and bottom in a relatively straight line. I chose to use the circular saw for this as I knew it would leave me with the best finish as opposed to using the jigsaw, which would be safer, but leave way more of a jagged finish. Once the top and bottom were cut, I laid the barrel on its side for some risky circular saw action. As you can see by the end of each cut, the barrel wants to fold in on itself and stalls out the saw. Because of this, I came back with a hacksaw to finish the rest of the cut. I then break out my sanding block and remove the leftover fuzzies. The upper rim needs some trimming with the jigsaw to fit in the rectangular perimeter. Next it was time to fire up the dust collection and start chopping up all the old 2x4s from my old workbench. I was careful to cut out any really bad parts as I was chopping these parts to length. A full cut list can be downloaded for free on my website diybuilds.ca. Here's a quick look at all the 2x4 pieces required for this project. To begin assembly, I lay out my long and short pieces which surround the perimeter of the barrel. Both barrel halves will get the same frame so this process is duplicated. Next I can stand up the frame and place a scrap 2x4 on the table behind to support the half barrel as I wrestle it into the frame. The barrel is held in place with several inch and a half screws around the perimeter. I work from the center of one end outwards to the other side to avoid creating waves in the plastic from uneven pressure. Next I begin by attaching the short legs by driving one screw in and using my speed square before driving in two more screws to lock it in place. Next the lower cross brace can be added to prevent racking. I line up the middle legs next to the short legs, mark the height offset before driving in three screws to lock them in place. Again, the use of a speed square ensures squareness of the joint. I then attach with only one screw the long legs to the upper barrel so they're free to rotate. I then move the upper assembly to rest on the lower barrel edge, making sure it overlaps the lip of the barrel. I then attach one side of the lower middle cross brace and slip the lower barrel support between the legs. I then noticed the 2x4 was too tall for this and at the table saw I ripped a small amount off so it would sit flush under the barrel. This support piece is attached at the far end with two more 3 inch screws as well as the close end and cross brace. Next I attach the last cross brace to the upper barrel support at my homemade linear actuator vise. 
I then set up a small spacer block to hold the far end up under the barrel while I attach the cross brace at the far end. The legs can now be locked in place with more 3 inch screws as well as toe nailing the middle to the upper barrel support beam. Next I can temporarily install a clamp to reduce spring out and remove the middle upper cross brace. I then attach a few wood blocks with a clamp to the center of the upper barrel and start applying heat to the surrounding area. As I do this I apply steady pressure downwards to bend the lip down and thus creating a waterfall edge. Once this has achieved the right slope I clamp it in place and cool the area with my leaf blower. After a quick hit with the utility knife to remove sharp edges, it's over to the chop saw to make a replacement piece for the upper cross brace out of some 1x6 material. I then hold the piece in place and mark where the slope begins and ends. This allows me to draw a slope and cut the shape out at the bandsaw. Once cut out, I can refine the shape at my oscillating spindle sander. Next, I can drill pilot holes to avoid splitting of the wood and drive in some 2 inch construction screws to attach it where the cross brace once sat. Next, I chop the end off my old water table waterfall pipe as it won't be needed anymore and I want to reuse as much as possible. I then chop two pieces of 1x6 material to 4 feet and 3 feet respectively. I then set my miter saw to 45 degrees and chop off the corners of the top of each board. Using my combination square, I mark the center of the board from the side and the top and bring both boards to my drill press where I use a Forstner bit to hog out material for the pipe to slip through. This creates a very nice tight fit. Then at the disc sander, I round off the corners a bit before bringing both pipe support boards to the router table with a quarter inch roundover bit to ease all the edges for a safer feel, as the kids after all will be touching this. Next it's time to remove the two barrel halves. As you can see some modifications were necessary to remove the lower barrel from its captive frame. I then decided that I would give all exposed edges a sweet half inch round over to again protect little hands and foreheads should they interact with each other. After the roundovers, I went over everything with 80 grit sandpaper to make all these old 2x4s feel silky smooth. I then painted the frame a truly hideous green, which, fun fact, used to be the color of my kitchen. <coughs> Next I decided to paint the giant popsicle sticks a bright red, which, fun fact, used to be the color of my garage door. Okay fine, it's not that fun. Now it's on to final assembly, where I can start by reinstalling the lower and upper barrels. Next I line up the 3 foot tall red popsicle sticks in the middle of the upper frame and secure it in place with 4 2 inch screws. The same is then repeated on the other side for the 4 foot long lower pipe support popsicle stick. I then slip the reused waterfall pipe from my original water table build 3 years ago through the lower support until it bottoms out on the end cap. I then use some PVC cement to attach a coupler to a short length of pipe. I then mark the length needed and cut it to length with my miter saw. The pipe receives several eighth inch holes in a line about one inch apart to let water flow out. The pipe is fed through the upper support and cemented in place making sure to line up both pipes waterfall holes. Next I cement on a 90 degree elbow which faces upwards to allow the hose to fill the pipes with water. The last thing to do is drill a hole and attach this 1000 gallon per hour pump which I bought off eBay for $22 and attach it to the lower barrel. I made sure to use o-rings around the flanges and hose connections. Honestly this pump is insane for the price and was the all star in this whole build. On a side note I did end up adding the center support as an insurance policy against these super heavy barrels crushing my children should the main support fail. And with that, the project is complete and it's time to turn it over to the customers. Oh no, I'm down here! Oh, I gotta get out of here! Ah! 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 Oh yeah! Run away. Ah! Oh, I need it.
Do you like it? I don't like it. I love it. I don't like it. I love it. Say bye, boys. This one's not working.